anyone can learn to lead. Um, there's a lot of people out there. And as a matter of fact, we need more leaders. If you're listening to this, you're a leader. And you may be telling yourself, well, no, I'm not. I'm, you know, the mail clerk or I'm, you know, I'm, you know, working the cash register at Chick-fil-A. You're a leader and you need to understand that. Uh, everyone in this life is a leader. It's just at what level are will, you willing to step up and lead? And, and learn to lead is, a, is an acronym that anyone can use to be a better leader. And it works whether you're at the very beginning of your leadership journey or you're all the way, you know, the CEO of Fortune 500 company, these principles apply. So the L stands for the three rules of leadership. And the three rules of leadership, you know, so many people mistake when they think about leadership, they think about leading other people like leadership is leading others. Well, yes and no. Um, at the at really 70% of leadership is how well you lead yourself, how well you build structure and discipline into your life, positivity in the face of negativity, your ability to drive forward and, and set goals and knock those goals down and, and be able to, to just execute. That's 70% of leadership. And so many people don't understand that when things are going wrong and they're struggling to lead their teams or their people. 90% of the time, it's because they're not effectively leading themselves. They won't, they, they were making the same mistake I was back then. Do as I say, not as I do. And, and there was a time in history where that worked, but it doesn't work today. Humans are more free thinking and uh, we want to follow individuals that we believe in. And that's true leadership. That's the great thing about it. Um, you know, that is the definition of leadership by example. Number two is leading others. And, and oftentimes people confuse, you know, the, the round hole in the bottom of our face is, <laughs> as our ability to lead others. And, and the reality is rule number one sets you up for success with rule number two. Remember, 70% of leadership is your ability to lead yourself. So people already are willing to lead you if you are effectively doing rule number one. Like they're excited. They're the, one of the greatest leaders I ever met. One of the defining um, things that happened in Ranger School when I almost left, um, you know, one of our most respected leaders told me, Jay, he's like, people will follow you if you give them a reason to. He said, now go back to Ranger School, crush it, and then come back to the SEAL teams and give the guys a reason to follow you. Rule number one, that leads itself to rule number two. People will follow you if you give them a reason to. So really, our ability to lead others is predicated on um, motivating and inspiring them, providing them the right resources, providing them the right training, communicating with them, and also holding them accountable, telling them, hey, these are the right and left limits. And if they, if they veer outside of those limits, uh, then, hey, why? Let's sit down and talk because this isn't going to work. We need to, these are the lane that you're going to operate in. And the rule number three is you've got to lead always. You cannot pick and choose when you're going to lead. And a lot of leaders make this mistake. I greatly made this mistake. When I was a young SEAL leader, I wanted to, hey, look at me. I'm the leader during the day. But at night, I wanted to be Tommy Lee from Motley Crue, man. I wanted to drink my face off and just party like a rock star. And you, you, you have to be very careful with that as a leader. Everything you say or do impacts your credibility as a leader. And that's why you have to lead at all times. If, if you're going to let your hair down, you have to do it in a very trusted environment with people you can really trust. Uh, and you have to be very careful in this day and age because this follows you everywhere, which will damage your credibility as a leader. Um, and the other component of leading always is um, it is in the hardest times when the world is burning down around you, when, you know, COVID and everything's been turned off that's the time you have to step up and lead the most. And oftentimes it's natural for us to turn inward and feel sorry for ourselves. But as a leader, you gotta step up and lead. That's the moment where it's most critical to lead. And that's why we say you have to lead always. Um, and you have to be aware of those things. So that's the three rules of leadership. Number two is engage teams through trust. Um, so often people, especially young leaders, we're into micromanaging. So, you know, if you're following rule number two, leading others, you're providing them the guidance, the resources, the training they need. Well, trust them. Let them go out and execute, man. You're going to build a great culture and great teams if you do that. And, and trust, you know, that's a two-way street. They're going to trust you more that, that you're giving them that, they, that you believe in them. And that's going to make for great teams. And that's going to make for great leadership dynamics. Number three is A. 
uh, in the learn to lead model. It's active communication that you are not only most time leaders, you know, we're about putting out information, but we're not about receiving information. And oftentimes, A, listening to your people, listening to your clients, listening to the problems, walking around and being aware of what's going on within your company or organization or team. You know, we used to joke about in the SEAL teams, a bitching SEAL is a happy SEAL. But if everything gets quiet, there's a problem. Well, if you are actively listening and you notice this, that's time for you to open this up. Um, we also used to have a thing in the SEAL teams where we would have bitch sessions. Like if we knew that there were issues going on, we would bring the platoon or the troop together and everybody had an opportunity. And usually there'd be an issue. They were upset. It's something that was going on and they disagreed with it. And, uh, and, and they had an opportunity to, to voice their opinion and either eight things would change or the leadership would be able to say, well, guys, here's the deal. This is why we're having to do this. So that's active communication. Um, Number four is respect. I meet so many leaders who I feel like don't respect the position they hold. Um, I see this a lot in politics. I think there are political leaders that are terrible at this, who um, make statements. And I'm like, why would you say that in public? I mean, you, you don't just lead uh, a small group of people that may be positively happy you said that. You lead all these people. You know, those that support you and those that don't and leaders That's right. and, and, and leadership is that not everybody's going to believe in everything you do, but you need to respect the full spectrum of the people you lead and what you're trying to do, um, which means you need to respect the position you hold as a leader and respect the people you lead. And then the last one, there are no shortcuts. When I got myself in trouble in Afghanistan, that's N, uh, I saw an opportunity to I thought, make myself look like a hero and, you know, rush down into this valley to get into this gunfight. It was a shortcut. I saw an opportunity and I was like, this is going to make me look great. I'm going to be such a great leader. It was a terrible decision. And uh, man, it almost ended my career on top of a bunch of other decisions. It was kind of the final straw. But so many people are looking for that. They're looking for the shortcut, you know, that that here's this big deal that'll make me amazing or um, you know, I'm going to cut the corner here because it's going to put me into a great place. And it's just not true. There are no shortcuts. Becoming a good leader is, is sustained performance over time. And that experience over time is what makes good leaders. So anyone can learn to lead. And uh, if you incorporate these things, I guarantee you'll be a better leader. 